So let's go ahead and take a look at the transactions uh, that we capture with CAI that we're going to use as part of this example to go through the baseline test case options. And let's look at how these transactions were generated, and then let's look at how we isolate these transactions to use in the test case, because it'll make a lot more sense as we look at the options as to how we got the data and how we're able to consolidate it and put it into the test case. So to begin with, CAI can capture manual user actions that happen on a UI, and it can also capture transactions that happen through something like CA application test, something that's automated and happening on the back end here. So for this example, for these videos, went ahead and used a test case in CA application test, and I have the case open here in dev test workstation. And what this is, this is the Lisa Bank 10 users CRUD test case. And this test case goes through and it, it runs a typical business process of adding a new user to the banking application, creating accounts, depositing some money, withdrawing some money, and then verifying this and then deleting the user. So it's a, a pretty straightforward business process. Now we can see the workflow right here. And this workflow is going to use this data set here, which has 10 records in it. So it's actually going to cycle through 10 times, and it's going to do this for each of the 10 records that are in this data set. So these 10 users will be added, go through this whole workflow, and then deleted. And all this information is going to be captured by CACAI, and it'll show up over in the dev test portal in the Analyze Transactions area. And then we can work on isolating that. So I've already run this test case, so the data is there already. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the Analyze Transactions pane, which is available under Application Insight, Analyze Transactions. And let's see how we can isolate all this data we have here down to just the transactions that we want. So to begin with, I already know where some of this information is, so I'm going to go through this very quickly just as an example. but. I happen to know that this was done a few days ago, so I've got my filter here set for the last seven days. So it's showing transactions from the last seven days. But as you can see, we've got transactions here not only from cars, but also from Lisa Bank. And we want to isolate this down to just transactions from Lisa Bank, for starters. So I'll go ahead and click up here on the Refine Transaction Search Results by applying filters, or the Filter button. And I'm going to select the JBoss Lisa Bank agent so that it only shows transactions from this agent. Now, what I want to use in this example is the add user object test step that we saw. So I'm also going to go down here to operation, and I'm going to filter out only the add user object transaction. So it's only going to show the paths that contain an add user object transaction. And you can see we have a good list of them here. Now, Normally, I would need to go through these and look at them and figure out which one's the correct one, potentially, or look at the timestamps, and that helps as well. But I happen to know that this is the very last of those 10 transactions right here that I need. So I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to choose Set Ending Transaction, and that's going to filter out everything after it, so it won't show any more of those transactions after it. And then I'm also going to right-click on the one that is the very first transaction here, I'm going to say set starting transaction. It's going to filter out everything that came before it. We'll scroll back up here, and you can see that it filled in here in the filter window, it filled in the transaction times and the start and the end times, so that by right-clicking and choosing those, it automatically filled in these fields. So I'll go ahead and close this, and we have our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 transactions that we need, which mirrors the test case that was executed against Lisa Bank. So in this instance, what we want to do next is get the add user transactions onto the shelf so that we can use them to generate a baseline from. And we want all 10 of these transactions. We want to be able to generate a baseline that will use the data from all 10 add user transactions. So instead of opening up each one and going through that, we can click here on this icon. And if I click it again, it actually would unmerge them. But by clicking it the first time, it merges all the transactions together, and you can see here it says it's merged 10 transactions because these are pretty much identical transactions other than the data itself. The paths are identical. So let's put them together into one. I can open this up. I can take a look at the data in here. 
like I said, I already know from going through this already that this is the transaction I want to use. It is the uh, web service HTTP transaction, and it's going to be the transaction I want to use to create the baseline test cases from. So I will right click, and you can see it says shelve 10 merge transactions. So I'm going to say, okay, let's shelve that. I'll click on it. Now we can see it's pinned, and it's got the 10 by it to show how many transactions are there. We can close this, scroll back up, open the shelf, and if I click on the create baseline icon, expand this, and click here to see the transactions, you can see now we're back where we started, where we have our 10 transactions and we have our options for creating the baseline. So that there's more than one way to get here, but that is a process on how we arrived, and as you can see, there's 10 add user object transactions that came from running that test case against Lisa Bank. Now that we have our transactions isolated and put on the shelf, let's go ahead and look at and talk about the options for creating a baseline test case. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on create a baseline. And we'll just start at the top here. You can see there's a unique identifier. It has a plus next to it. You click on the plus next to the unique identifier, and you can see the options for making the baseline test case. And this is our identifier for our collection of merged transactions that are on the shelf. We can edit this, and I'd recommend editing it. And let's give it a simpler name. I'll go ahead and give it LB for Lisa Bank, underscore add 10 users and then a hyphen and what what this is going to do is first of all you can't end with an underscore you have to end it with a hyphen i'm just part of the validation rules here for the name but the artifacts that are going to be generated into the project when you create a baseline have three parts to their file names and this is actually the middle part and this section here is going to help you identify which transactions you are working with so you want a name here that's going to help identify your transactions so we know these are the lisa bank add users that came part of that merge 10 transactions collection that we put on the shelf. After the hyphen, there's going to be a date stamp that will tell you the date and the time that the baseline test case was created. And before this will be another prefix, which we'll talk about when we actually click on the create button. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click the check mark to save that name. And now any artifacts that we generate from these, whether it's a virtual service or request response pairs, this will be the identifier that lets you know that it came from these transactions. Next to the date, we have three icons here. The first one lets us list the transactions that are going to be a part of this baseline test case. And we can hover over a transaction, get more information about it, see that the method is a post, and if we want to, we can delete it from this list. Now, this won't delete the transaction off of the shelf. It's just going to remove it from this baseline test case generation process. So if you wanted, say, only five, you could delete five of these and you'd only have five left over and generate your test case with those five and do another baseline test case generation and keep all ten if you wanted to. The next icon here shows the agent that the transactions originated from or the agent that sent the data over to the broker and that captured the transactions. You can click here to show all agents. Maybe you feel like these transactions, the collection transactions, should be representative of more agents than you've captured. This can let you know what agents are actually available. You can search and look for that agent, see if it's there, help you get your arms around that a little bit when you're working on things. But for this example, it's a very simple example with just one agent. So for the time being, everything is good. This is the agent that we want. And then the last one here is if we want to remove this from the listing, this entire collection here from the baseline listing, we can. And the reason for that is if we have multiple collections of transactions, so let's just say we went and found all the delete user transactions and we then merge them and shell them, they would show up down here. And in this baseline creation process, it would generate for the baseline test cases for the add users and for the delete users. So if we say, actually, we don't want this collection of transactions right now, you could click here and remove it and still focus on the delete users if they were here.